Eureka is a tool for detecting hidden mathematical relationships that might exist in your data. In this introductory video, I'll be showing you the very basics on how to enter in your own data and perform your own searches. This is the first view you'll see when you load Eureka. This is the data entry view. It looks and acts just like an ordinary spreadsheet. In fact, you can copy and paste from other spreadsheets, such as Microsoft Excel, to enter in your data. Uh, this spreadsheet has a special format, however, in that each column needs to represent a unique variable in your data set. Uh, there are two special rows. The first special row is the description row. This is for your own reference to enter in what that variable means, what it measures, etc. And the second special row is a variable row, which gives each variable a symbol. And the program uses these symbols to display variables, to display formula to the user. The remaining rows are the data rows that hold the numerical values of those variables. So let's jump right into an example here. In Microsoft Excel, I have saved some data of a pendulum. And a pendulum is a weight on a string that oscillates and swings back and forth. So if I select that data, I can right click on Excel, go to copy. And if I switch back to Eureka and I click on the first data cell, I can right click and hit paste. And now I've pasted dire data directly from Excel into Eureka. So this first variable is a time variable. So let's give it a symbol of T. And just so we don't forget, let's give it a description of time of uh, measurement. I believe this is in seconds. So let's go back into Excel. Let's grab the other column of data. And this data is the angle of the pendulum as it swings over time. I right click and go to paste again. And let's give this a symbol of X. And so we don't forget, let's describe, give it a description of angle of the pendulum. And this is in radians. So now we've entered in our two variables, time t and angle x. And we can edit these by double clicking on them, uh, copying and pasting them into another program, etc. So in Eureka, we work from left to right. And this is the data entry view. The next view is this smooth data view, which is you can do pre-processing and preview what the data looks like. So our variables are li listed here, t and x. If we click on t, we can see that time is just increasing linearly, and the data points are uniformly distributed, so we're taking uniform samples of, this, of the angle of the pendulum. Clicking on x, we can see that the angle of the pendulum uh, swings up and down, and it oscillates around zero. So we can see this is the angle of the pendulum as it swings back and forth. And we can also see that the, the amplitude of the swinging tends to decrease over time, and it tends to decay and damp out. So, the general idea is to use Eureka to find the equation, the formula, that not just models this data, but explains the dynamics of this data, uh, why it decays, and uh, what is the dependence on the, the frequency, and things like this, of the swinging pendulum. So, in this view, we can optionally smooth the data also. There's a little bit of a noise in here, but I'll, we can do this later. Uh, we won't do this in this tutorial. The next view over is the settings view. And this is a very important view because it specifies exactly what we'd like to, to model using Eureka. This uh, very first option here, the very first uh, text field here, this specifies the expression and there's a, that we'd like to satisfy. And Eureka has a special symbol here, F. And what, what this says is that uh, the program will search for an F such that this, this expression is satisfied. So here, Eureka has automatically suggested that we search for an f of t, a formula as a function of t, that equates to x, the angle of the, of the pendulum. So this is a way of saying, um, uh, find a model, f of t, that models the angle of the pendulum. So this, this form allows us to enter in more complex things, too. Say we wanted to model not just as a function of t, but as a function of x. So now we're saying we want to model, we want to find a formula of of t and x that models x, or we could find a, a more complex equation, so f of t, but perhaps also f of t plus two added together to model x. Now it'll find a single f of f of t that, when equated on t and t plus two and added together, models equates to x. But for now, let's just use the simple. A uh, simple model, we're just going to look for a formula of the, the variable t to model the angle of the pendulum. So we're looking for a time model of the angle of the pendulum. So some other options here are the error metric we're most interested in, 
if we knew some more information about the type of noise in our data, we could uh, uh, adjust this to a, a more appropriate metric. We could also choose how to order our data when we plot it in our data view. Uh, we can also specify uh, uh, weights for our data points in case we have different confidences and different data points that we have measured. Um, and then the next option here is specifying the type of formulas we'd like to look for. So here I've specified that I like to look for formulas that use addition, subtraction, multiply, exponent, sine, and cosine. The next option here is the, the servers, the computers that I'd like to distribute the, the search and computation over. So by default, Eureka will always use the local computer, so the computer I'm running right now. Uh, if there are other computers on our local network that are also running Eureka at the same time, they'd be listed here and I could, check I could select them, check them, so that the application automatically distribute the calculation over those computers as well to increase the speed and reliability of the search. So we've entered in our data, we've specified our target form. We can go ahead and start the search in our next tab here by clicking the Start button. So immediately, Eureka will connect to uh, the servers to perform uh, the, the, the formula search and start searching for formula to model X. And here on the left here, we can see important statistics like the number of seconds we've been searching for, uh, the total computers we're connected to, just one. Uh, my computer, the total number of cores, CPU cores, so I have a dual core PC, so there's only two cores. Uh, next, we can see the number of formula evaluations. This is the number of times that the computer has to evaluate um, a formula on a data point. So you can see we're doing 7 million uh, evaluations per second. It's pretty good. This gives you an idea of how efficient your computer is at performing the search. Uh, next, here we can see more specific statistics on the, the speed of the algorithm itself, the number of iterations per second, etc. Uh, on the right here, we can see kind of the overall progress of the, the search. So we started off with very inaccurate models and now we've, over time, we've found some more, much more or less erroneous models over here on the left. So it looks like we've already found some models. So if we go to the next tab, we can view the best solutions that the algorithm has found in real time. So on the left here, we've listing, we're listing the very best uh, formula that satisfied our, our target form. And you'll first notice that we're not finding a single equation, we're finding uh, a small list of equations. And each one of these equations is important or special in the sense that it's the most accurate equation for a given complexity. So here we have a very, very simple expression down here. It's one parameter, it's modeling the mean, but it's the most accurate one parameter model. Up here on the top, we have a much more complex model, much more complex formula, but it's much, much more accurate. So uh, in between here, we'll, we'll find equations that are more easy to interpret. Uh, we can actually click on them and see how they differ. How they differ. Um, so it looks like our best model has already picked up kind of the, the major components of our data. It's picked up the oscillation of the pendulum angle and also the decaying amplitude of that oscillation. So let's go back to our, our control progress view here and go to stop. And let's look at these uh, equations more accurately. So if we look uh, at the list of equations, one that sticks out here as, uh, is this equation here. It's the simplest equation that really fits the data really quite well if we look at it visually has a it's very, very simple, only 13 terms, and it has very good error. It's very similar error to even our most complex formula that we found, and there's not much difference between the two. And looking at this more carefully, we can see that the formula is modeling the oscillation in the pendulum's angle, the swing of the pendulum with this sine term, and we can glean that the, the angular frequency of that oscillation is 9.64, because it's multiplied with time, and there's a phase offset of 5.46. Now we can also see that this, this oscillation is modulated by uh, an exponential term, and this is a, a negative exponential with t. So we can see that the oscillation is being damped out exponentially with time, and this, this decay in the amplitude is 0 0.34. So already we've, we've gleaned some information that we didn't know before about this data set. Uh, we, know it, we now know that it's, it's decaying exponentially, and it's oscillating with this, this angular frequency. So the, the algorithm was able to pick out this formula from scratch. It didn't know it was a pendulum ahead of time. Uh, we only knew that, but uh, it was able to pick out just from the data, the physics that describe uh, the oscillation of this pendulum, the dynamics of this pendulum.